Hey guys, so in this video, I just want to run through the different types of pitchforks, okay? Because there's three different types. We've got the original pitchfork, we've got the shift pitchfork, and we've got the modified shift pitchfork, and they've both got the different uses. So I want to show you how we would choose which pitchfork we want to use, but also I want to show you the kind of the key differences between them. And in doing so, you'll hopefully get a better knowledge of how these pitchforks are actually generated and what they're actually telling us. So this is best demonstrated if we just pull up the settings of the pitchfork. So here we've got our settings bring this to the right now you can see here we've got these various numbers here these are the standard deviations for the pitchfork okay so what i mean by that if we just remove all the settings first of all so we're literally left with just our median line what these settings demonstrate is a, a standard deviation away from the mean so one standard deviation is demonstrated by our upper and lower median lines so there's a distance between the median line and the lower median line, which is the same on the other side as well. And we call that one standard deviation. Now, if we apply two standard deviations from the median line, so that's double the distance of the mean, uh, sorry, the median line to the lower median line. So the lower warning line is double that distance. So this distance from the median line to the lower warning line is double. This is two standard deviations. And this is obviously is the line that determines the trend. So that's how these uh, lines come about. And these are the most important ones, the, the, the one and two standard deviations. You can apply further standard deviations, which on the higher time frames, you may find yourself needing to do that because you can get a lot of space between these lines where you would want to see where you might find further support and resistance. So as I say, there, there's a role for these other settings, these other standard deviations when we're on the higher time frames, and we've got a lot of white space between these uh, uh, settings, which are the one and two standard deviations. So the next most important settings I would use are the halfway points between these lines. So we've got the 0.5, and then we've got the 1.5. These are the next most important standard deviations. So we're essentially looking at just like the halfway points between these lines. You could go one step further if you really wanted to. I rarely do this, but you could use the 0.25, there's the 1.75, 1.25, 0.75, 1.75. As I say, these other standard deviations, they carry less weight. They're not as significant. It's the one and two that carry the most weight. They're the ones that are likely to act as the most significant support and resistance. I only apply these extra lines if we're, as I say, there's a lot of space on the chart where we just want to find a bit more information where we might find support and resistance. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I hardly ever use these additional ones. Uh, I do sometimes apply the 0 0.5 and the 0 0.5 and the 1.5 which are basically the halfway points between our our main lines but generally speaking as a default setting i would just have the one and two standard deviations which is our lines that we've been discussing so and it's the same for all the pitchforks the deviations will be the same in terms of the distance away from the median line the only thing that differs between the different types of pitchforks is how steep the lines are. They'll always be parallel to one another, these lines, but and but they'll be at a different gradient depending on the choice of pitchfork. Okay, so I'll just quickly demonstrate. If we look at the original pitchfork, it's a very steep gradient. If we go on the shift pitchfork, it's a gentle gradient, and you'll notice the modified shift is just a very slightly steeper gradient than the shift. So the story is that there was a man called Andrew, so the other name for the original pitchfork is Andrew's pitchfork, and he came up with this type of pitchfork, the one with a steep gradient. And this is generally useful for when we're expecting an impulsive, very directional bit of price action, you know, with an explosive move behind it. Price will generally gravitate towards the lines within this pitchfork, and you'd be looking for take profits at the median line, upper median line, upper warning line, that, those kind of regions. So that's where the original pitchfork is very useful. Now the shift pitchfork, as I say, it's got a much more gentle gradient to it. So it's better for following more corrective looking price action, price action that looks like it's in a kind of going sideways, correcting, it could be, you know, a market pause, whatever you want to call it. And generally speaking, as we know, the market spend probably about 80% of the time in a corrective phase and only 20% of the time in a trending phase. So as you can see, there's a much higher role for the shift pitchfork or even the modified shift, which generally hold on to the more corrective looking price action. So let's talk about how they differ. How, why, why are, they, are some steeper than others in terms of the gradient? The easiest way to discuss it is starting with the original pitchfork. So it's just the median line that changes. The others are always just in parallel with the median line. So here, and this is the case with all three types of pitchfork, whether it's original shift or modified shift, you can see the halfway point between the second and third pivots is where the median line runs through. So that's the common theme 
for all the pitchforks. But it's the origin of this median line that in the case of the original pitchfork, it, it starts at the first pivot. And this is what gives us its steep gradients. You will see the upper and lower median lines, they're just, they always run in parallel. And the upper median line stems from the second pivot and the lower median line stems from the third pivot. So yeah, this is the original pitchfork. So the median line here originates from the first pivot. So let me show you how the shift pitchfork is different. Okay, you can see here, again, we're going through this halfway point between the second and third pivots right here. But look how the starting point of the median line is, is different here. And I want to zoom in so we can see this with a bit more clarity. So how, what is this? Is it a random point or is it calculated? Well, it is calculated and we can demonstrate it by just drawing a rectangle connecting the first and second pivots as such. This point here, that is the start of the median line, is the halfway point in the vertical distance between the first and second pivots. So this is the vertical distance between the first and second pivots, and this is the halfway point. And you can see the start of the median line is in line with the first pivot. So that's the shift pitchfork. Now, the modified shift is just a slight deviation further. So let's take off this rectangle a moment, and I'll show you how the modified pitchfork is drawn. So this is the modified shift. You can see the start of the median line is here now. Again, it's not a random place. If we draw our rectangle connecting our first and second pivots, this point is right dead in the center of this rectangle. So it's the halfway point in the vertical axis and the horizontal axis between the first and second pivots. And it gives us that point right in the middle. So what you'll find is, just taking this off now, with the original pitchfork, let's go to the original, that's your steepest gradient. Reason being, the origin of the median line is right at the bottom. Whilst if we go on the shift, by lifting up the bottom of the median line, it's reducing the gradient of the median line. And then the modified shift basically just brings the, this, this uh, start of the median line to the right. And that will actually lift the gradient of the median line. So there you go. It's brought it slightly to the right. As a result, it's increased this gradient from here through this midway point between the second and third pivots, lifting the median line. So you've just got a slightly increased gradient, but the difference isn't too much between the shift and the modified shift. The big difference is between the shift and the modified compared to the original pitchfork. That's quite a big difference in gradient. So yeah, this is how you can spot just by looking at a pitchfork, which type it is. So I can tell straight away, this is a modified shift. Why? Because the median line is originating right in the middle of the points of the rectangle that joins the first and second pivots, as we demonstrated just a moment ago. So as I say, I would generally, by default, when you, imagine you haven't got all of this price action just yet, because we can see just going through the different pitchfork types, we can see right now the shift pitchfork is the only one that's holding the price action. You can see the price action doesn't leave the pitchfork at all. Whilst if we go on the original, clearly price isn't following this pitchfork. If we go on the modified shift, again, price is not following the pitchfork. So I would always want to see the median line tested. The fact that the median line actually didn't get hit here is a big concern for me and it's not a pitchfork I would want to use. Same applies to the original pitchfork. We never came into the median line. And so although you could argue, you know, we're hugging the lower warning line, maybe we're going to head to the median line. The fact that it's not yet hit the median line at all is the concerning feature for me. It should be gravitating straight away towards the median line. Uh, and you can see on the shift, that's exactly what happens. We hit the median line, then we get a pullback, then we gravitate towards the median line again. So there's no doubt here about the choice of pitchfork. So how would I determine if this is a useful pitchfork to use in my trading strategy? Well, I really like this pitchfork and I'll explain why. Okay, so the first reason is because there's very little ambiguity between the first, second, and third pivots. It's very clear, that's the first wave, and that's the second wave. So we've got our low, high, higher low. There's no other kind of argument on how we could draw the first three pivots. So because there's no ambiguity, you know, it's, it's clear, you know, the choice of pitchfork has been chosen correctly. The second reason I like the pitchfork is because we've eliminated the other possibilities. So the shift pitchfork is clearly the only one that's holding the price action now. It's clearly the only one where the median line was tagged. And so we can eliminate the modified shift and the original. So it all means that you can give more weight towards this pitchfork. Why? Because 
the first three pivots, there was no ambiguity and there was no ambiguity about the choice of pitchfork. So it basically means when you come into these very key lines, the one standard deviation or the two standard deviations, they carry more weight behind them. I can trade with more conviction because it, there's no ambiguity about the choice of pitchfork. There's no ambiguity about the choice of these data points, the first three pivots. Okay, so it's very useful pitchfork right there. All right, so another key thing you'd want to see uh, with a, to, to determine the credibility of a pitchfork, the more tests it has of these lines, so if they're hitting the lines very nicely, so here, I, I, again, I like the pitchfork. We've got a nice test of the median line, nice test of the upper median line. We came down lots of tests of the lower median line. Again, just hovered around the median line a bit. Then we went up. Where did we find resistance? At the upper warning line. Then we pulled back to the upper median line, then this financial crisis, 2008, where did we come down to? The median line. Now, we'll see. I mean, this will be for another video talking about what's going to happen here. But uh, you I would say just looking at this pitchfork, I, I like it. You know, the lines are getting respected nicely. So just as you would look for lots of tests of a, a horizontal line or a trend line, and the more tests it has, the more validity and credibility that line has it's the same application to pitchforks so the more accurately it gets tested the more conviction i can give with any future tests of the lines so it also means that if we were to break the trend and break the lower warning line that that break of trend would be more convincing to me than a pitchfork where the price action wasn't respecting the lines very nicely. So three things really to consider. We've got to consider how clear cut are the choice of pivot points, how clear cut is the choice of pitchfork, and how how many times has the pitchfork lines, not how many times, but have the pitchfork lines been respected consistently. So that's always useful if we've got a long established trend, but sometimes we won't. We might have just formed these first uh, two waves and got our three pivots in and then we might be just hovering around this point so at this point I, as i say i would usually use a shift pitchfork because price has a tendency initially to follow the shift pitchfork because it follows more of a corrective gentle gradient initially that's not to say it can't transform and start following an original pitchfork a more steeper gradient but initially i would just hold on to the shift pitchfork and then i would start to see if the lines are getting respected, if all of a sudden we get, um, let's zoom in here. If you know we were to disrespect this median line, we go went higher and then get rejected. I'd question: Are we really following a shift? And then I'd look at the modified shift. I'd look at the original also. So yeah, you 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 kind of have to adapt it as we go along. But as I say, the more tests it's had going forward, the more credible the pitchfork is, and the more you can rely. On the support and resistance levels even when we don't have an established trend i will often consider you know following the first three pivots put in on a shift pitchfork if we come in and tag the upper warning line i'll get concerned there i wouldn't really want to hold on to a long position there i would be cautious of a bit of a pullback even if it is to turn into an original pitchfork that we follow we're likely to respect that shift pitchfork upper warning line because you've got to remember a lot of algorithms are triggered based on an upper or lower warning line on a shift pitchfork okay if you if you think about it what would what program settings would you want on your algorithm if we're more likely to follow a shallow gradient because um, price action usually follows more corrective price action than it does a directional price action then you would want a shift pitchfork because it follows a more gentle gradient so you would want your algorithm to follow a shift pitchfork and where are we most likely to get the most aggressive reaction it's at the lower and upper warning lines so those lines always i would be cautious at so those are the initial settings that i would use uh, but i would be open to changing the pitchfork as time goes on depending on which pitchfork is getting respected the best so it is quite complex but you'll find that it will all make sense and um, it's with practice it will become second nature which is the best pitchfork to use but as i say if there's ambiguity about the the final pivot for example or the choice of pitchfork i would just let that i would factor that in to kind of your risk allocation in terms of trading or i might even consider to just hold off and wait for more clarity a supporting indicator for example so that's pretty much everything i want to say about the different types of pitchforks yeah it's a, it's not always to a novice trader it's not very simple but as i say with with practice and i feel like i've covered all the different things to consider quite thoroughly in this video by applying these things it will become second nature quite quickly
So hopefully that's been of use. And in the next video, we'll be just looking at a bit, a little bit about how to interpret the price action within these pitchforks. All right, let's wrap it up.